Hello, and welcome to Nikisa's webinar. Nikisa is a world-class organizational transformation and finance solutions provider headquartered in Montreal, Canada. We are very excited that you could join us today. Before we start today's session, we'll just go over a few navigation pointers about the GoToWebinar service. To ensure the best audio quality possible, everyone except our panelists are muted. You may ask questions at any time during the webinar by typing them in the questions tab located in the control panel to the right of your screen. This session is being recorded and both the slides and the content will be made available to you after the webinar session has closed. So let's get started. Speaking on the panel today are Jody Marner and Chuck Frost. Jody is the HCM Business Solutions Executive Leader here at Nikisa. With more than 25 years experience working in strategic human resources leadership roles, Jody offers subject matter expertise on merger and acquisition integration, divestitures, recruiting and partnering with the business to drive the strategy forward using proactive tra talent strategies. Chuck is the Chief Operations op Officer here at Nikisa. He has been involved extensively in the HCM space for over 30 years and works closely with many organizations worldwide to build sustainable HR strategies and continually develop new innovations. Please note that you can find us on Twitter at Nikisa Inc. And we encourage you to tweet during today's webinar using hashtag NikisaHCM. We have a packed schedule for you today. Starting off, Jody and Chuck will discuss some of the historical trends of organizational transformation. Then they'll tackle a few scenarios that cover organizational design and M&A integrations. So from here on, over to you, Jody. Okay, thanks, Nima. Um, so Chuck, what do you see as the top three for the business priorities now? Well, they, they really, in a lot of ways, haven't shifted much from three basic ones and then three that are more specific. There's always the growth agenda. The C-suite will always have that on, as their mandate, and driving efficiencies for sure. But right now what we're seeing is the, the growth is all coming through inorganic means. Uh, the organic growth, of course, that happens on a regular ongoing basis, but the Big moves are being made through inorganic growth, so acquisitions, for example, mergers, and so forth. Uh, but in so doing, the, the CEO almost has a full-time job to manage the culture. And over the years, back in the 80s and 90s, culture wasn't necessarily considered to be a factor in, a, in an acquisition or an integration or in the growth of, a, of the company. Uh, but that has all changed now. And the CEO, we're finding, spends a lot of time making sure that in the growth of the business, the culture is managed very tightly so that they don't uh, veer from their, their path of success. And at the same time, they're looking for data and analytics to be able to uh, define and uh, articulate uh, storylines for the business growth and the transformation that it's going through. So, you know, so in summary, it's all about growth in businesses. A lot of inorganic growth, huge money available out in the market for acquisitions these days, uh, maintaining the culture and leveraging data and, and analytics to tell the right story of where you are and where you want to go to. So, Chuck, how do you attack inorganic growth? What does it mean to the HR business partner who is working with the business to get this speed of growth happening? Well, inorganic growth is an exciting process to, to be for sure. The, uh, there's a lot of challenges to it, and over the years there's a lot that's come to bear to help make it a little bit easier. Uh, but inorganic growth really starts at the core as to what business you're in. What is the business model that you're operating under? And understanding, of course, your market and your growth agenda and where it is you will find growth. And finding an organization that is uh, either uh, will help you increase the amount of volume you have. Um, it sounds very complex. So, like, when you talk about this, you know, understanding your business model, moving it forward, what are you talking about for man hours? Like, what does this look like? Well, it's huge effort. Uh, when you look at an organization uh, that is acquiring another one and then looking at ind integrating it, and the amount of time that's spent on that could sometimes spend months or years of, of effort. Certainly, access to data is very key. We want to be able to move quickly. Acquisitions, especially in public companies, as you know, uh, 
uh, they make commitments to the street and their investors that they will have some uh, very defined benefit by acquiring another organization. And then they're under time frames and time pressures to realize those opportunities. Stock prices are in effect here. So the, the whole notion of speed and accuracy could never be more important than during this process. Do you, do you think that organizations today are adequately skilled up to do this, or are they leaning on external parties to help them? I think there's a little of both going on, but I think the studies show that organizations are not necessarily resourced to, to do this work, uh, the justice that needs to be done to, to have it done quickly and accurately. Uh, most data would suggest that organizations are not that prepared, and there's a high rate of failure well over 70% of those acquisitions, uh, integration processes, don't meet its, their objectives. That's got to be pretty frightening if you're an executive in a business who maybe has sponsored this acquisition for the inorganic growth. You know, what is it do you think that they need to be able to make effective, safe decisions to make sure that they do meet their return on investment? Well, certainly getting access to the organization and the talent within the organization of the company that they're purchasing is vital. They need to know who they've got, who the, who represents what skill set and competency and knowledge base that they will port over to their organization and integrate. And they need to understand what are those competencies and skills. What is the history of their performance? What can they value? Will they add to the business that has purchased their company? Um, next off is they're going to need to understand where that fits in their current organization or design a new go-forward organization and then place the skill sets in the design itself, whatever, whatever that design would be. Now, in order to move that fast, the technology's got to come to bear for that because it's only through the application of, uh, of good, solid data uh, and high-end technology with speed and accuracy can that occur. So, Jody, we're really here to talk about Hanley a terrific uh, solution from uh, Nakisa, Organizational Transformation. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, sure, Chuck. Yeah. So as you said, Handley is an uh, organizational transformation software solution. It's powerful, it's fast, it's accurate. And what it provides is it allows you as an uh, HR professional and a business leader to be able to do uh, team design down into your business units, organizational design from the CEO down and do multiple scenarios, share it out with a whole plethora of people, um, or M&A integration, where you can pull in data from two, three other organizations, have one view, and start doing your integration by delegating it down to your key leaders um, and making sure that you are targeting your top talent and putting the right people in the right roles. The other great part about uh, Hanley is it also can do divestitures. So you can carve off parts of the business that you no longer want to play in or that you feel is now not going to be core of your business solution. Um, and you can carve that out and sell it off. Or if you have to uh, hit some synergy targets, it's another opportunity for you. With Hanley, we have this complete org visualization, the org chart. You can see the entire organization. You can find people. You can search on skills. You can uh, look for key leaders in key areas. And then my favorite part of Hanley is the analytics. So with a click of a button, I get to see my span of control, my head count, my total salary, um, my position count. It's all right there at my fingertips. And if any business leader asks to see it in a different way, if they want to see just one region or they want to see just uh, one gender or they want to see their millennials, a couple clicks and I can have that information to them in a second. It seems to me Hanley is an outstanding option to address the technology challenges of uh, acquisition integration or organizational transformation. Uh, tell us a little bit about why you think that might be. Uh, definitely, Chuck. I will for sure. In fact, Hanley hits all of the pain points that you were just sharing with us earlier about what's necessary to make sure that uh, companies are prepared to do an acquisition and, and to do inorganic growth. With Hanley, you have accurate timely data at your fingertips. I heard you say a couple of times, data is the key. If you're going to hit your ROI, if you're going to hit your metrics, you really need to understand what you have, what you're getting, and where you're going. With Hanley, you're able to see it all in one, one place. You're able to share it out with key leaders in your organization. You're able to communicate throughout all of your design planning. 
Um, and then you have one platform that everybody leverages and you can see the data change as you continue to design the organization. Well, I have a question about the cost of errors and the cost of inaccuracy. It must be overwhelming. And you've, you've been involved in so many acquisition integrations. Surely you must have seen the impact of errors uh, that are made due to lack of technology and how this solution might have helped. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, man, if I had had Hanley about 10 years ago when I was doing all of my integrations, uh, I would have been a very happy person. I've seen things like uh, when you're doing everything manually, you miss a complete organization or you miss a key person or you, you overlook people that are your top performers or your top talent. Um, and so when you've got a solution, one place to put everything, you reduce your errors um, like just down to nothing. Um, you have it all there. You can see where everything is. You can see your data points. Um, you can change on a dime. If you're not meeting your metrics, you can quickly adapt and, and switch around. Um, the other thing, too, is, I mean, think about the errors you get just from manually putting new information back into your HRIS. With Hanley, it's an automatic upload. So there is no human error. So, and I just like when I look at Hanley and I look at everything it offers, the amount it accelerates your time to uh, production, your time to performance, your time to just start working in the new model compared to in the old days where you were talking, you would do a first round and then a second round, potentially even a third round before you got it right. And you're talking about months, potentially even years before you actually have an accurate organization that's going to meet your business goals and strategies. With Hanley, you're talking weeks. That's incredible when you when you think about the the speed variation that has occurred over over the years. So, based on what I just told you about Hanley Check, why don't we look at some key scenarios and how we would apply it? So, when you think about acquisition acquisition integration, what keeps you awake at night? The whole process keeps me awake. <laughs> <laughs> There's no question. It's very very complicated. Uh, when, when you look at the, the various scenarios, and if I just go up to 30,000 feet for a second and go back down, uh, there's a lot of scenarios that the Hanley solution can uh, facilitate uh, meeting your pain points of your business, uh, whether that's an acquisition integration, whether it's a restructuring, a reorganization, small or large, uh, whether it's a merger or a divestiture. I mean, it facilitates the the organization design and evolution of the organization brilliantly through that whole process. When we look at acquisition integration, uh, there's a number of factors that would keep me awake that I think Hanley would, would help uh, rest a little easy. Uh, one is time. There are pressures in an acquisition integration process uh, due to legal compliance, uh, notification rules, legislation, um, commitments to the street anxiety over loss of key talent that don't want to live in the gray zone for very long. So time and the essence of time is critical. And so Hanley is that solution which, due to the fact that you can get access to so much rich data about an employee and about an organization and model it and set specific targets as to the future state that you want to move to and allows you to measure that movement, uh, it facilitates your transformation uh, brilliantly, thereby reducing the overall amount of time. No question, Excel has been uh, instrumental in the acquisition uh, integration process. Um, the solution allows you to depart from that and uh, do it all online and uh, in, in faster uh, period of time. That would be nice not to have to work in an Excel spreadsheet. Well, it's less cumbersome to say the least, and uh, the cost is uh, is very high in the old process where you had to do and redo processes and you had literally banks of employees that were uh, busy doing uh, analytics on spreadsheets and recrafting org charts. So the cost was high, and what's done over the course of many, many months or even a year can now be reduced to you know weeks and, and very few months uh, due to the speed of the software also allows you to uh, enjoy some cultural matchup, meaning you take a look at how an organization is designed and how it operates 
and make some general assumptions and some predictions around uh, the uh, the cultural alignment to your organization. Do they have uh, is their operating model similar to yours? Uh, do they have the same type of skills or complementary? And depending on what your problem you're trying to solve, that's an important question to answer. Uh, we talked a little bit about speed and accuracy, but I, I can't impress enough upon the importance of speed to reduce overall time to outcome and the, uh, the sensitivity to inaccurate data uh, and thereby redoing work that's not accurate to begin with is a very high cost proposition. Finally, uh, organizational synergies. This is a big one, and it's a fun area to, to take a look at with organizational design. For those who are responsible for that in their careers, this is the part everybody looks forward to. And that it, this adds real value to a business when you look at uh, getting rid of duplicated uh, functions or competing processes uh, or, or competing uh, organization models. The uh, operational synergies are something that uh, you, you want to get at quickly. And you can do that with Hanley because you, you, you have the, the ability to put organizations side by side, look at the various metrics that uh, help articulate where your, your power is in the organization through your talent and where some of your vulnerabilities are that you want to shore up with the new acquisition. It allows you to set uh, tolerances or, or parameters uh, for your integration so you can manage your cost, for example. The, the Hanley solution allows you to put uh, your parameters in place so that you don't exceed certain costs for functions. Or you may want to uh, fall within certain budgetary requirements of salaries. And you can look at before and after uh, scenarios to see if you've kept within budget. Scope, uh, banding, uh, uh, span of control, these are all uh, key uh, attributes of organizations that the Hanley solution very quickly and, and in real time uh, displays with every change that you make. So you can see if you're meeting your commitments or not. So with this, I mean, the amount of pain points that you hit, why would you, what would you say is the number one or the top two or three points? Why do most acquisitions fail? Well, uh, there's actually quite a few reasons for that, but I, I, generally I find that uh, there are there are three biggies. One is the lack of a formal integration strategy and an associated process, um, and in that in particular would come down to uh, do the does the organization have specific individuals who are accountable for the acquisition process, and then who is in charge of the acquisition integration process and meeting uh, specified outcomes. So without a formal integration strategy or process that's documented and, and crisp to follow, you, you will likely increase your percent chance of failing to your acquisition outcomes. Number two, inability to deal with unexpected challenges. You know, in, in, the, in the paperwork days, in the Excel era, uh, if there was an unexpected uh, change or uh, direction or a challenge that was put forth through your designs, uh, it would take weeks or months to get all of that corrected. If you're a 100,000 person company and you want to change the design on the fly, you sure couldn't do that uh, using um, traditional methods. So uh, Hanley, uh, I think, facilitates that brilliantly to be able to move uh, and change based on unexpected challenges uh, uh, with lightning speed. And which brings me to the third point, which is delays and lack of uh, speed. Uh, the, nothing is more frustrating to a CFO who's uh, ready to communicate to the street the synergies only to find out that they, they aren't really calculated yet because the, the 25 people in the back room doing the analysis haven't, haven't finished their work yet. Yeah. So it sounds like Hanley can help us prevent this failure. Can you talk a little bit about um, where Hanley fits in to prevent this failure? Well, sure. I, I think... Um, looking forward and being prepared for potential uh, problems in your process and what, how will you mitigate that. The Hanley solution is your mitigation strategy as well as your strategy to avoid problems to begin with. Uh, I think certainly one, one key area to take a look at is to understand and identify the complexities of your acquisition integration early on. Um, so what, what could be potential problems? Uh, cultural differences. Um, 
business design differences. So meaning one is an operational excellence company, the other one is a product centric company. Those are, those are fundamentally different. Um, other complexities could be uh, disparate systems, uh, different measuring systems for uh, assessing talent's uh, overall performance uh, and suitability for the new organization. I think also understanding the value uh, and established uh, priorities of values is very, very key. Uh, where organizations have different values, of course, the ability for it to operate uh, harmoniously is problematic and you end up spending years sorting through the, the value differences, and which again affects culture, you can cripple a business and you lose the value of your acquisition fast. Uh, also, securing the right tools, which I know is a self-serving comment for Hanley, but the reality is we all know that you have the right tools to do this quickly and accurately. You, you move around through the problems a lot faster. Well, why don't we take a look at Hanley then so we can see this in action. So we can see here how Hanley helps you set your values, your priorities, as you were saying. You'll notice right here where we are setting the targets that we want. We are then looking at our existing organization structure. We're bringing in the new organizational structure. And now, to make it really simple, we're going to drag and drop the two uh, heads of HR together, and we're going to then delegate that to one person to the, the lead in HR and allow them to create the proper organization of the new company. So now, Chuck, let's look at another scenario where we can see Hanley in action. So tell me about just restructuring for operational efficiencies. What are you focused on? Well, a significant amount of uh, savings is produced by an organization by driving operational efficiencies. And that's been in place for years and years and years, these processes and practices. Um, and so whether you are moving an organizational model from, let's say, a centralized decision-making to decentralized or vice versa, as you often see in the automotive industry, and that's done to help reduce cost and get rid of duplication uh, and, and leverage synergies by controlling the decisions in various parts of the business. Uh, operational efficiency may also include something simple like reducing the number of layers so that the, the decisions go to those that are closest to the problems and get rid of some of the bureaucracy and the cost of running decisions up the uh, top of the tree and down the other side. Uh, in addition, it may also be to look at uh, ways to get at uh, strategic alliances from uh, other divisions or other countries and how you might organize around to leverage the differences uh, in organizations that are in different countries, for example. And you may also want to uh, restructure for operational efficiency to design a different operating model with people, teams, project teams, work groups, and so forth, and move away from traditional structures. So all of those apply, uh, plus, ma plus many more, but it's all done in order to increase the speed of decisions, uh, to uh, help reduce costs and re redundancy, and basically help an organization become more competitive uh, in, in the sector that they are operating in. Excellent. Okay, so let's take a look at how Hanley actually does this. As you will see here, we have two organizations side by side. First thing we want to do is we want to look at what are the span controls. Operational efficiency says let's increase our span of control. So we have a lower end, a higher end, and we color code it so we can see where we are or are not meeting our key targets. Once you've done that, now you can start modeling to hit the key targets that you just put into place. So here you'll notice where we're grabbing an organization from one side and we're dragging and dropping it into the senior VP area. And from there, we're going to watch our span of control numbers drastically change. And as you see the change, you see where the colored icons show you where you're hitting your targets, you're not quite there, or you're actually above your target. It gives you a really clear picture of what you need to do next. So now, Chuck, let's look at scenario three, where we're actually doing this restructuring for cost reduction. What are the major costs associated with organizational inefficiencies? Organizational efficiencies can be found almost anywhere. It's just a matter of the, the extent or the, the volume of them. But in order to reduce costs, you, you want to take a look at some problematic, problematic areas like 
Now, duplicate roles in large businesses, there often are exactly that, duplicate roles or redundancies that exist, shadow organizations that have been put in place uh, to uh, overlay on top of additional organizations that already exist in another part of the world. Uh, uh, inefficiencies can exist as a business uh, goes through a change of strategies or a change in work functions or deliverables. So there's just a whole lot of opportunity. So, Chuck, what are some of the best practices or coaching tips that you can reference for people? Well, every organization comes at cost reduction from a different perspective. There's some fundamentals that are the same, but there's nuances that are different. So um, we've often seen situations where the C-suite has declared the need to reduce uh, costs by 12% but don't identify where the cost reductions have to come from, just the targets. Or they may say, you know, we've got 50,000 employees and we need to get to 38,000 employees, make it happen. And, and that's because at some levels they may not be intimately aware of some of the opportunities at the very uh, grassroots of the organization. So they leave it up to their, their VP levels, their strategists and their operational experts to take it from there. So they want to take a look at uh, programs, certainly. What programs do we want to stop running to incur some reduction of cost or not implement, so cost avoidance, um, or they may want to uh, start some programs, and those programs may be uh, Six Sigma-based uh, cost reduction-related uh, programs. Uh, but also, you could apply the same approach to processes. Which ones do you want to stop? Which ones do you want to start? Which ones you want to put on hold? And these are processes that add time, uh, complexity, uh, people costs. And so th- those are some handy tips just to categorize your cost reductions in terms of stop, start, or hold. Okay. So how has technology changed the process surrounding restructuring? Well, in the cost reduction arena of restructuring, the technology has been instrumental uh, in a a number of ways. In no particular order, um, the technology has helped identify where the current costs are uh, in terms of headcount or layers in the organization that cause incremental time to make decisions or slow an organization down, or an organization that is uh, perhaps a bit heavy in the... uh, the talent organization that is not performing especially strong. So technology allows today a picture of the current reality to become very apparent quickly. And in addition to that, uh, technology has also t- uh, provided the ability to look at scenarios. So modeling out different scenarios with its cost structure to answer the question, what's the optimal design that would help facilitate a, a, a cost reduction that would meet the tolerances. And it would be all in real time. Technology today, especially the Hanley solution, it operates in real time. And so you, you get an accurate view of the cost reductions immediately as they uh, become in effect. Well, why don't we take a look at Hanley and see how that is actually in, put into play. Um, as you can see here, as you were talking about, we have the key targets, headcount, budget, span of control. We're going to set those targets and then we're going to apply them to our scenarios. So in, in this case, what we're showing you is we need to get rid of our lower performers. So we need to do a reduction in headcount by 5%. So what we're doing is we've created a drop zone, uh, an area where you can uh, do administration later. And we're taking the people that we feel are not adding value into the organization, or the positions that aren't adding value into the organization today, and we're moving them over to that drop zone. From there, we can automatically see what the targets, if, if our targets are being met. So there's a fourth scenario that we should talk about as well, which is the scenario of leveraging data to enhance organizational performance. Maybe we could speak a little bit about that. How has data changed the way that you design organizations, Jody? So the data has allowed us, and I think you referenced this earlier, Chuck, is with this access to immediate data, you can speed up decision making. I think about the time that is spent in just trying to get the data once you've created a scenario. Now it's literally at your fingertips. With the filtering capabilities, you can change your decisions on the fly. So you may have said we want to grow in Japan, 
and we realize that the cost of salaries is prohibitive. So we can go back on that strategy and move it over to, say, China. Um, and it can be done within hours uh, of that decision being made. Have expectations for the HR community increased with the emergence of uh, big data? Oh, yeah, definitely. Now that we do have the data, there is an expectation that your HR leaders are coming to the table with accurate, timely um, data. And so the leaders aren't asking them anymore, where did you get this and how old is it? What they're asking them is, what decision are we driving using the data that you've provided me? So what has been the impact of HR analytics on the HR function itself? It really has moved the HR person to the table where they are driving decisions by saying, here's what I'm going to show you. Here's where we're at. Here's where we're missing our targets. Um, here's where we are exceeding our targets. Um, here are our key top performers. Let's make sure that we have leadership roles, proper succession planning. The conversation has really elevated. That's pretty exciting, especially when you consider the speed at which it moves. The application of the, the outcomes can be applied very quickly. What sort of data do you really need, though, at the end of the day to support organizational transformation? The type of data that you're looking for are things like uh, span of control, um, regions, uh, gender diversity metrics, headcount, payroll. Um, let me give you an example of what uh, analytics Hanley provides. <clears throat> So here we are, we're seeing where with our dashboarding, you immediately see a full view of your organization. You can understand who your high potential high performers are. You've got your age distribution. You've got your gender distribution. And with a few filtering clicks, you can get very specific on key demographics. Um, how many males do I have in the 60 to 69 age group? You know, that's a high retention risk, uh, sorry, retirement risk. So you want to make sure that you've got some plans in place. Um, we've got our, our sunburst, which allows you to see the entire organization in one view and then drill down into key areas to understand what percentage of headcount that population is in your organization. Jody, let's take a look at summarizing and concluding what we've talked about today. Thanks, Chuck. Yeah, so let's. So Hanley, as we can see, is the only solution out there that increases the speed to business. It gives agility, it gives flexibility, it's dynamic, it changes the conversation at the table to are we sure we have the right information to let's really drive things forward to our new business strategy, to our integration, to whatever it might be. We've got incredible insights, we can see our entire organization, we know who our talent is, we can look at where we want to go, plan for our future, um, and all of this is to build that organization of the future. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. We will be responding to all your unanswered questions in the coming days. If you have more questions, please feel free to contact today's panelists directly or email us at nakisa at nakisa.com. Thank you.